By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at the fifth round of the Raging Bull series in Amsterdam. And we have uh, Domenico from Italy taking on Tom from Belgium. And this is actually a mirror match because both players are playing with a dead guy ill, but of course there are some differences. Before we start looking at the differences between these two Dead Guy Ill decks, I quickly would like to discuss with you where the name Dead Guy Ill actually comes from. Because uh, Dead Guy was a team uh, back in uh, 2005 that had players on board such as John Finkel, Dave Price and Chris Bakula. And these guys made up this, this deck, this ale, this new brew with black and white and hence the name Dead Guy Ill. And they actually reached the finals of the Grand Prix in Philadelphia. Now the philosophy of the decks is that you play with tons of cheap spells and uh, disruption. So obviously Dark Ritual and Old School is, uh, is great for that. So it's a cheap spell, it's very efficient and then you get a hippie out. But you also play with sinkholes and of course white has a lot of very efficient removal. Especially in Old School you have your Disenchants, you have your Swords to Plows here. So you want to play a very uh, efficient and aggressive disruptive deck. That's basically what Dead Guy Ill is all about. Now when we look at the differences we see that uh, Domenico, the Italian player, is playing with uh, blue power and Tom is just keeping it traditional black and white. And uh, one of the main similarities here is that they both play with Underworld Dreams. So you don't always see Underworld Dreams in these kind of Dead Guy Ill builds, but in this case I believe they're both playing with three or four even in their main deck. So it's going to be curious to see how those Underworld Dreams will perform when they're actually playing a mirror match against each other and also it's going to be interesting to see how that blue power is going to work like obviously there are three very powerful cards um, are they going to make Domenico's deck really really much better or maybe it's going to work against him that he cannot find a blue mana or um, he, he's not as consistent as when you don't play with the uh, blue power card so very interesting to look at the dynamics there um, so let's let's go to game number one and, and see how it goes Game number one with Domenico on the play. It's hard to see there, but behind his hand, I believe, is the uh, an underground sea. And there we see instantly that blue power, the dead guy ill on steroids here, casting a time walk. So taking an extra turn, playing a Mishra's Factory passing turn to Tom from Belgium. And let's see what he can do. We can see he has a Chaos Orp in hand. And there's instant aggression here with a strip mine, stripping away the factory. And there's a mox jet there, a scrub line from Tom passing turn. So interesting to see that it's kind of a slow start despite the fact that both decks are, are pretty aggressive. And there is a mind twist. And this could be um, devastating here for Tom. An early mind twist powered by all the mox in there. So he can play a Mind Twist for four. Only three cards left there. And let's see what Tom can do. I do see a Disenchant there in his hand, playing his second Scrubland. And there is a Sengir Vampire, a nice traditional creature. 4-4 Flyer. And if it manages to kill a creature and doesn't die himself, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Back in the day, people used to play this with Nettling Imp. And there's the first attack here from Domenico, the Italian player. So it's going to 16 and there's a Disenchant on the Underworld Dreams. And there's a Sinkhole, it seems. Yeah, a Sinkhole there on the Underground Sea, so that's no blue mana anymore for Domenico. And he's playing a Hypnotic Spectre. Another hit for four. It's going down to 12. And let's see what he can do. He's playing a basic Swamp here. And it's playing his own Underworld Dreams. And that's kind of what we talked about, this Underworld Dream battle. But it's not a key card in this deck. It's just a way to deal some extra damage when you're already uh, putting in a lot of aggressive damage. And here, um, Tom has to discard his last card, which is a Disenchant. I feel he needs a balance here. And there's a... Oh, nice, nice. There's a Mind Twist from Tom. Uh, twisting... Domenico's hand in response a quick disenchant over the 
Underworld Dreams, and that's game already. So this first game went very fast, and maybe the second game will go very fast too. These are very aggressive decks, uh, and here we could see uh, Domenico kind of taking over. That Time Walk was uh, really in his favor, but of course that um, Mind Twist early game, that was the big decider here, at least I think. So uh, let's let them sideboard, and then we'll get back to them in game number two. Game number two with uh, Tom on the play, so he'll have to win this game in order to get that third game going and a Mox Pearl on the side of Tom and a Mox Sapphire on the side of Domenico and Domenico is also one of the organizers of the Fish Liver Oil Cup in Genoa in Italy very cool tournament and okay let's see what Tommy's playing another Mishra's Factory so he's got the army and I think he can just attack because I don't see any white mana open there on the side of Domenico. He actually has no white mana source. So um, Tom doesn't have to be fearful here for a source. And it's interesting. So he chooses to leave his pearl open, kind of showing the, the threat of a possible source to plows here. And it's kind of hard to see there what Domenico is doing, but he's casting a dark ritual. Tapping a Sephir, having four mana, and casting a Juzum Jin. So that's a 5 5 powerhouse from Arabian Nights. And he, he needs a source here. I do believe I see one in his hand. Taking a damage here. And he's probably going to cast his swords on attack. Playing another Juzum Jin here. Wow, 10 damage on the board. And there's the first sword. So that does mean five life here for Domenico. But the threat is gone. And I wonder if Tom decides to play another Swords, if he has one at the end step. Well, he does not. Maybe he doesn't have one. Playing another Scrubland, having five mana now. And I always find the problem with Jews and Jins is that, that they have a toughness of five. I have the same when I'm playing against the um, Urnum Jins, because that five toughness is very hard to beat. And you see it now as well, because he has two Mishra's Factory, so he could pump one Mishra's Factory up potentially to a 4-4, um, four, four, but that's not enough. Of course he can double block as well, but that's very risky with Disenchant and Swords from the, on the side of Domenico. So an attack now with the Juzam. Let's see what's going to happen, and I think he's going to go for the double block, and hopefully for him, Domenico doesn't have a Swords here. It's not looking good. And there's a source coming. And this is kind of the scenario that you're afraid of. Because when the source is coming, um, you're basically losing both Mishra's factories. Because he's playing the source before damage is dealt. So after blocks are declared. So of course he's pumping him up, his other factory up to a 3-3. He can make it a 4-4, but it's not going to be enough to kill the Juzum. And, and that's, that's the danger, that's the risk. So he does get some life. Okay, and this is interesting. So I guess he's saying that I'm not going to block. Interesting. It's hard, of course, to know what the players have decided or in what phase they're playing what card. But um, anyway, he still has his Mishra's Factory. He's down to 17. Uh, Domenico is on 19, playing an Ancestral Recall. So there's that blue power again. Playing another City of Brass. And I think what would really help Tom here is a city in a bottle, but I don't think it's it was part of his sideboard plan. And there's an attack with the Spirit Link on the Juzum Jin. And there's just too much pressure on the board, I feel. And of course there's that Hypnotic Spectre as well, so that's going to take a card here from Tom if he cannot cast a Swords or anything else. Looks like he can, so... He's down on 10 life and Domenico is already on 21. Of course, that Spirit Link doing a really good job there for him. And this looks like a losing game again for the Belgian player. He needs a balance to kind of get back in here. It's, oh, I, I thought I saw two cards there being tapped, but it's going to be an Hypnotic Spectre. At least he can hold off Domenico then for one more turn, maybe buying himself some time. So it's going to 20. There's a Disenchant on the Underworld Dreams. Not really, you know, that effective in this matchup, I feel. There's a Swords to Plows here. And kind of here you see, thanks to the Ancestral Recall, Domenico has like a handful of spells. 
And that can kind of help him here. And there's the attack from the Juzum Jin. Probably have to chum block here. And actually he blocks the factory. It's probably a good decision here. I mean, but he's down on five, loses his last card. And interesting to see here that Underworld Dreams doesn't really do much. It's just too slow with Domenico playing the Spirit Links and the Jews and Jins. And of course the Blue Power. And there's the Swords. So interesting, interesting. So that's five life here for Domenico. But more interesting here is that Tom at least buys himself a, another turn. I like this. And he's actually attacking it, why not? Why wouldn't you attack? Because you have nothing, you cannot block the Hypnotic Spectre anyway. So there's a tap, taking some damage from the City of Brass. I believe he's on 25. Another Juzum Jin. I mean, pff, that's Juzum Jin number three. I mean, that's just very unlucky here for the Belgian player. And that means Domenico wins with his Juzum Jin force. I mean, that was crazy. So congratulations, Domenico, on this 2-0 victory. And uh, maybe we'll see you back in the top eight with your dead guy ill on steroids. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more old school gameplay, you can click on the links that are appearing on the screen right now or take a look on the YouTube channel that is called Timmy the Sorcerer. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>